To look at the very smallest topologies, we can list out the examples. But one thing we find is we really need to change the notation because here's the standard notation. If you have zero points, it's just the empty set. If you have one point, the empty set and the point, which is the same thing as the entire space. If you have two points, you have four possible topologies. You can have just the empty set and the entire space, but those are in every single one. That's one of the rules of a topology. You have to have the empty set. You have to have the entire space. So there are four possible topologies here, and if you can't tell the difference between A and B, then topology 2 and topology 3 are the same. Now I could start to list out the topologies on three points, but there's actually 29 of them, so this is going to get very time and space consuming. So it's very important when you're doing advanced math to be willing to make up a new notation to condense and simplify. Let's have empty parentheses stand for what we call the indiscrete topology. It's got nothing except the bare minimum. If we have just A in parentheses, that stands for you have the subset containing A and nothing else except the bare minimum. If you have A comma B, that means you have A and you have B, and therefore you have A union B, but that's also the same thing as the entire space. So on two points, the topologies are this, 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 and this, and that's a lot shorter. With this condensed notation, I can now write out all 29 topologies on three points. I've grouped them in their similarities, and there are a whole lot of interesting ways to classify topological spaces. There's isomorphisms, there's separation axioms, and lots of other stuff, which unfortunately I don't have time to get into in two minutes.